Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarethome.com where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies and where we also provide tailor-made solutions for hospitals and intensive care units whilst providing quality care for long-term ventilated adults and children and medically complex adults and children at home including home TPN also including home non-invasive ventilation such as BiPAP or CPAP. In last week's blog, I talked about a safe pathway for modern urine disease MND patients with intensive care at home. You can check out last week's blog by clicking on the link below this video. Now, in today's blog, I want to answer another question from one of our readers and prospective clients who says, and this is from Angie, who says, my sister is 66 years old and has COPD asthma and a host of mini more underlying problems. She's on a ventilator now and is having a tracheostomy put in as we speak. She lives alone and is required to use a walker for mobility. She will also have a PEG tube put in because they think she won't be able to come off the ventilator at all. Do you think she would possibly be able to live a normal life at home? Well, that is a great question and let me share this with you. In order, you know, you, you, you're saying your sister has been able to walk before this hospital admission. Will she go back to walking? I don't know. It's hard to say. Will she live a normal life if she's on a ventilator with a trach, tracheostomy and a PEG tube? Probably not in comparison to what her quality of life was like before she went into hospital being ventilated with a tracheostomy and a PEG. However, here is what intensive care at home will do for your sister. It will normalize her life and it will give her a much better quality of life compared to an institutionalized intensive care unit. I mean, by the sounds of things, you've seen your sister in ICU, you've seen the institution, you know that it's not the right place for someone potentially facing weeks or months on a ventilator needing to be weaned off a ventilator. Now, the other thing that you haven't shared is, you know, just because your sister has comorbidities like such as asthma or COPD, doesn't mean she can't come off the ventilator. That's hard to say, you haven't given me enough information. You know, can she be weaned off the ventilator at home, for example? You know, those are the type of questions you need to ask. But in terms of your sister, can improve her quality of life at home as opposed to an intensive care unit. No question about that. Again, imagine your sister stuck in a in a in an ICU in a hospital, you know, where it's noisy 24 hours a day. It's never pitch black. You know, it's always, always feels like there's daylight. There's always people around. Always people talking. You know, people can't really rest in there, which is not conducive for recovery either you know in order to get back to a normal day and night rhythm for example which is very hard to achieve in an intensive care unit you know that is something that can be achieved at home it's only one of the many things that can be achieved at home but with intensive care at home we're bringing the intensive care into your home you know especially when someone is ventilated with a trach and it will improve your sister's quality of life tenfold right by having nurses coming into your home and looking after your sister there. So, you know, um, I guess it also comes down to, you know, quality of life, what is it? It's a perception, it's a subjective measure. It's not even, a, I believe it's not even an objective term because quality of life for your sister may be different. What you perceive as a good quality of life, what I perceive as a good quality of life, you know, it's really in the eye of the beholder. And it comes down to establishing some goals that are realistic and achievable at home. You know, also, again, you haven't shared enough, is another option for your sister, you know, if she doesn't come off the ventilator, want, want, does she want to have a palliative care at home? You know, is that something that she has considered, that you have considered, you know, rather than having palliative care in a hospital, in ICU? You know, again, we believe we can do that much better at home as opposed to in, an, in a hospital ICU. So I hope that helps you shed some light on it. But, you know, I would also imagine in ICU at the moment, you have limited visiting hours, you know, if your sister is at home, I presume, you know, your family can come and go as you please and you're not holding to hold an account to an institution, you're holding account to your sister's home. 
you know, there's a very different dynamic at play here. And obviously, you know, you have a lot more control at home about what's happening. You know, again, you know, in a hospital ICU, it's all driven by what the hospital wants at home. It's driven by what you want and your sister want, you know. So many, many advantages to go home in a situation like that, especially if your sister can't come off a ventilator. Um, you know, it's all about control, power, making informed decisions, peace of mind. And I believe that's what intensive care home will give you and your sister having control and say over her life. Give us a call uh, on, one of our, on one of the numbers on the top of our website. We are currently operating all around Australia, but even if you are in the, in the US and in the UK, you should contact us as well. We can help you there as well. Um, so, and if you have a loved one in intensive care or you need home care for ventilation, tracheostomy, home TPA, non-invasive non ventilation such as BiPAP, CPAP or any other conditions where someone is medically complex, you should contact us here at intensivecareathome.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or send us an email to info at intensivecareathome.com. We are NDIS accredited in Australia. We provide services all around the country. We're also a DVA, Department of Veteran Affairs approved provider as well as TAC uh, in Victoria and Eye Care in New South Wales. And if you are an intensive care nurse with a minimum of two years ICU or pediatric ICU experience, please contact us as well. We have vacancies for ICU nurses in Melbourne, Sydney, and in Brisbane. You should contact us. And uh, if you are an intensive care specialist and you're watching this, we're also looking to expanding our medical team. Um, please contact us as well if you're interested. Now, Subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care and intensive care at home. Share the video with your friends and families uh, and contact us at info at intensivecareathome.com. Um, like the video, click the notification bell and share the video with your friends and family. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment below what you want to see next and what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecareathome.com and I'll talk to you in a few days. Thank you.